What's up guys, today I'm gonna to bring you the next installment of our TrueNAS Fundamental series. Today we are going over the Network tab. This is not gonna be a super long video because networking is very fine tuned and can get very advanced very quickly depending on your setup. But there's a few global things that pretty much all of us share and that's what we're gonna be going over today. So we're gonna start here in the Network tab. This is what you're probably gonna see the first time you boot up TrueNAS or install TrueNAS and before you make any type of changes at all. So we're gonna go ahead and detail some of the changes we're gonna make here in order to make this work a little bit better just for all general purposes and I'm going to start showing you just a little bit of where the advanced stuff is without really tweaking it too hard this way at least you can see it and understand where the documentation is so if you happen to fall into one of those advanced use cases you know where to go ahead and get the information from to set this up correctly so let's jump right in all right, the first thing we're gonna see up here is our global configuration. I'm gonna get back to interfaces in a minute, but I wanna change some things here because there's definitely not enough here for this to be stable in my opinion. We're gonna go ahead and go to settings, and this is the first thing we're gonna probably wanna change. This is our host name. Uh, this is what it was set up as. You can call this anything you want, but this is what it's gonna show up as on your network, and this is what it's gonna show up as uh, when you're using mesh networking or other things. So I'd probably give this a more unique name than just this. So I, whatever you guys wanna change that to, I strongly recommend you change that to your domain if you wanted to go ahead and kick into the domain like you have something that's like you know something dot local uh that's fine add that there with well, the things you're going to want to come in here and change immediately are going to be your dns servers and your default gateway so the default gateway in my case is fine this is the right spot but i don't want to be using that as my name server in this case i want to be using something like cloudflare and as a backup i want to use maybe google and after that I probably want to use my local router. So that's what my DNS servers should really be switched to in order to make that work out. I don't want to mess with proxies and I definitely want to allow all my outbound because if, if I start messing with outbound traffic, you're gonna end up with all kinds of weird problems. But everything else here is pretty good for right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. There it goes. And now I should see my name servers populate like that. And this is gonna be a lot better. If you ever get the error where it says like TrueNOS catalog can't sync, that's a name server or DNS issue. So that's, that, that's where that comes from. Next, we're gonna go ahead and look at our interfaces. The one thing I wanna do right off the bat is I wanna build a bridge. And the reason I wanna build a bridge is if I wanna build something in instances uh, or really that's either LXCs or VMs, chances are I'm gonna to wanna to pass something through from the host into the instance. And if I do that uh, via NFS or really via anything, in order for me to get to my instances and to get to my VMs, uh, I have to be on the same subnet as the machine that I'm working on. So I'm on the 10.99.0.0 subnet, but my instances are not in the event that I don't change the global configuration. So let's come over here to instances and let's check the global settings. You'll see here the bridge is automatic. This is the IP network that it's gonna give all of my instances. And this is the IPv6. This is not good. This is, I won't be able to reach this machine if I were to launch an instance on this IP other than the TrueNAS interface. And I don't want that. I wanna be able to use my local tools and my local VPNs and all kinds of stuff to get to that. So this, this is not gonna work. So let's go ahead and go back to my network tab and I wanna build a bridge that doesn't happen. So let's go ahead and I've already made a video on this that's just, just simply building a bridge, but I'm gonna do that here as well so we kind of get it all in one place. I'm gonna come over here and I wanna add a bridge interface and I'm gonna call this BR and then it has to have a number. So in this case, I'm gonna call it BR0. I'm not gonna put a description in here. Uh, I'm gonna change my bridge member. I have to pick my existing um, interface. This is the only one I have. If you have more than one, just use the one that you're actually actively using. And then I'm gonna go ahead and hit save on this. Whatever you do, I don't want you to touch any of these buttons yet. So now that we have that and the bridge is up, I need to, well, at least built, I need to change this and give it the IP. So what I wanna do is I wanna give this IP right here to my bridge. So I have to move it, in this case, I'm gonna copy it uh, from my existing uh, interface. And maybe yours is DHCP, in which case you're gonna to wanna to uncheck that box so it looks just like this. Save, and you'll see here that the IP goes away. So now I can move that IP down to my aliases on my bridge, just like that. I'm gonna go slash 24, just like that. There we go. So now we see that I've now moved the IP address from ENS18 to BR0. Now, you can change the static IP address if you want to anything you want. If you do that, when we go ahead and click text changes, which we're gonna do in a minute, you're gonna to have to come up here to your URL bar and you're gonna to have to change and type in the new IP that you give it, just be aware of that. Because I'm giving it the same IP that it was on before, I'm gonna be able to click test changes and click save. So let's show you that right now, let's click test changes. I do wanna confirm and test changes. There we go. So now I'm back in the UI saying I now have 57, 56, 55. I, it's counting down to hit save changes. The reason for that is if I made a mistake and I accidentally locked myself out of my own TrueNAS interface, if I don't click the save changes button in 46 seconds, TrueNAS is gonna assume that I messed something up and it's automatically gonna undo all my changes just in case I lock myself out, which is super smart. I did not lock myself out. I can see it. I can see the timer moving. I'm gonna click save changes and there we go. So now I have a bridge built. 
The first thing I want to do now that I have that bridge built is go over to my instances and I want to change the configuration to use the new bridge. So now we see here I have a new option, BR0. I'm going to hit save. Now any instances that I build are going to be put on the bridge and on the 10.99.0s24 network. So that's great. Over here, we've got a couple other boxes. You'll see your static routes. And some of you guys might have a little box here that says IPMI. That's for super fancy people that have really nice server motherboards that can actually interface with the hardware over IP. Really cool if you guys have that. I'm super jealous. I don't, so you won't see that box here for me because that hardware is not available to me. Static routes is available in the event that I have a, a route that's outside, in my case, the 1099 network. I can add a static route here and say what the de destination is, what the gateway I should be using to get to that destination is. So if I have something on another VLAN that I want to get to and I want to use my router as the gateway, I would put that in here and add a static route. The only other advanced features that exist are really here in the network interfaces add section. There's a few other type of network interfaces we can add. So we already showed you a bridge. We can do link aggregation if you guys have like two 2.5 gig, uh, gig networks, uh, RG45 Ethernet plugs, or if you guys got some kind of other fancy setup and you want to do link aggregation, you can do that. And of course, if you want to set up a VLAN, you can do that as well. I'm going to show you here in the network documentation for TrueNOS. I'm going to put this link in the video description. This is the networking tab and it'll show you how everything works. So in this case, for example, let's look at this network interface screens, this one. So over here, we can see all the fun things that we can add, all the bridges and here's all the VLAN settings, uh, the LACP settings for VLANs. This is load balancing, failover. So yeah, this will show you all the settings you have the options for. So for example, if I would come over here and type VLAN, all these options here that the parent interface, the VLAN tag, all these things, they're explained here in this. This is exactly what it does and exactly what you need to enter in order to make sure this works. So if you've got some of that stuff, which unfortunately I don't, I can't demonstrate to you guys all of this and it gets pretty advanced pretty quick, jump over to this documentation, come down here and you can expand this. Like for example, if you actually want to run link aggregation uh, and bridge for load balancing, you can come here and it'll show you how to set up load balancing on multiple links that you're going to aggregate together for speed. So there's all kinds of cool things that you can do here. The documentation's got all this. I'm not going to get into the weeds on it and just drag this video out. I just wanted to show you guys that today so you can kind of get up and going because the most important thing you're going to want to do is build a bridge immediately and get your name servers right so that you don't accidentally uh, have an issue syncing your catalog or your something like that happens. Um, once you get that up and going, you're pretty much good to go. If you want to go in for the fancy stuff because you want to do some really cool advanced features to do with the hardware for that, make sure to go over to the documentation and check that out. But I thank you guys for watching this video. I thank you guys for supporting the channel. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the uh, chat space below, the comment board. Uh, please like and subscribe to this video and this channel. And if you have very technical questions, please post them on Discord. And if you want to support me personally, please buy me a coffee.